So um, we have another question from the audience. Uh, one of the things I like the most about this collaboration, right? It's truly bridging theory and practice. In fact, what Columbia Business School is all about. Um, you know, academia and, and the front lines of business at Google, at American Express, as well as your previous uh, organizations, and directly a uh, question exactly about that. Uh, where have you seen QR really drive significant revenue from an organization? Do you have an example? Um, yeah, um, I'm just trying to think which one because I actually use this a lot. Um, you know, I think one of the, the most telling examples was um, I went into a uh, GM and uh, we were presenting, you know, uh, global results and um, looking across 47 different markets. And there was a couple of results that I actually um, put in the appendix because it was an, an outlier. Didn't form, didn't follow the, the pattern of the other data. And he asked a very telling question during this. And uh, he said, is there something you didn't expect to see? Is there something that, that surprised you? Um, we talked about this uh, a, a bit when we talk about QI. And I'm like, actually there was. And when I went and shared um, this data in the appendix, he leaned over to his chief of staff and he's like, where did we do that test pilot that we didn't tell anyone about? <laughs> and this, uh, his chief of staff uh, listed four markets. And as he read these four markets, these test markets lined up perfectly where we saw double digit increases um, versus any other market. And I put that in, in the appendix. And as we now dove into this, because he asked that question, it became the basis um, really for the business case, for the funding, for something called rapid on-site support. Um, and um, as a result of that, the customer experience was better, um, our service and support to the customers. And this really was the basis for a, a really retooling, reimagining um, how we offered support to the customers um, in real time and gave them enough uh, you know, facts, evidence to really go and build a business case. So it changed the customer experience, it changed our uh, you know, net promoter score, and it changed really you know, how this uh, GM uh, went before the board to make a business case. And I have a, a few examples as well. Certainly I can think back to the, the dot-com days when there seemingly was no data to compare against. But I'll, I'll go back to a different example. I've previously talked about going out and seeing 78 customers in 120 days because I was asked to go build a business around this one thing, blank sheet of paper, one word on it. Well, it turns out that word was grid computing, which is now a precursor word to virtualization, which if you're in the cloud business, that is a core pillar. And the sequence of events was, we have no data, wait a minute, we understand technology. And it was really brought to life going up and down that pyramid, as we said before. We had data, we started to do some analytics, we started to go talk to some customers, bring that information back, and constantly go back to the essential question. What business can we build around this? What problems are we solving? How can we open up different industries? So over and over again, we went through that repeat cycle and actually built multiple billion dollar business, businesses across different product lines for IBM at the time. And there are many industries out there that are using all of this. Another, this is, a, a, I think, great examples of, of the use of, of quantitative intuition out there in the field. We have another question, which is, when is it beneficial to combine intuition and uh, data? And also, which one come first, comes first? Chicken, egg, egg? Yeah, chicken, I, was, yeah. I was just going to say, it, it, it's, it isn't really a, a choice, frankly. I mean, you know, from what I've seen, you know, as the business problems become more complex, you know, and, and it's funny, the, you know, we talk about data overload. Sometimes you don't have the have the data as we you know as we talked about and you know so you need that combination of you know the intuition what have I done in, in the past and can I lean on that and how could I carry that forward and then more importantly you know what data do I have available and do I really understand that and how does that impact you know t today and and the, the the topic we're we're discussing or you know the the essential business problem we're we're trying to, to tackle. So I would think it's it's almost more like um 
it, it, it's almost like a, um, it's not even a hand handoff between data versus intuition. Um, it's really more of a handshake between data and, and intuition. Right, and this in fact, in many ways explodes or, or decomposes into a whole set of questions. And this is where we think about it as jazz. This is not linear. You're going up and down, you're revisiting themes as you know something new is introduced. So the, the notion that there is you know, a, a perfect starting point, it's really also situational based upon your business. Is this a startup initiative, even within a large company? Is this a steady state business and you're looking to say, how do we refresh it? Uh, is it a business that's under attack? Different scenarios, you'll start at different points there. I think thinking about the theory of learning and thinking about this notion of the these, these uh, steps going all the way to the intuition, which is the, uh, the, the unconscious uh, competence, it requires observing the data in order to develop the intuition. How do we build intuition? We see things over and over and over again. How did we learn how to drive and not even think about it? We just have been doing it over and over again, collecting a lot of data. And I want to actually bring an example, I think, which also fits very well with the notion of quantitative intuition is a, is in a, and highlights this point of data versus intuition um, comes actually from the book uh, Blink um, by Malcolm Gladwell. He tells this story about this um, firefighter who was a, or, or head of a firefighter squad running into a burning building. And uh, they're looking there, at the, uh, he, he's looking there at the building that the team already goes up into the building. And a few minutes into it, he goes into the building, looks around, calls everybody out. In, in the radio, he calls all of his squad out, everybody leaves. A couple of minutes later, the building collapses. So they went to him, to this head of the firefighter squad, and said, how did you do it? What was the magic? We want to teach other uh, uh, firefighter squad leaders. Uh, how were we able to get to this decision and to this intuition, right, to, to tell everybody to leave the, the building? And he kind of paused for a second and said, you know what, it's really hard. It's really hard to explain because a lot of the data that I observed here was similar to data I observed in other places, but it was truly the combination of what I, what I felt and what I've seen that caused me to do it. And then he said, if there is one thing that I can point to as looking back at my decision making at the time, it was that what I saw with the eyes, the fire that I saw with the eyes, did not match the level of heat that I felt in the body. And it is that mismatch that what surprised you that he didn't use the, the terminology, but it's it's that surprise of the heat I see, the heat I feel, it doesn't match what I see, which by the way meant that the, the fire was behind the walls, inside the walls, that caused me to 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 call call the shot. And it's this combination of stomach, intuition, acumen, firefighter acumen, together with the data, which was what we, we was collecting with the eyes, what you observed, which is exactly what we define as quantitative intuition, and indeed. Uh, it's truly a matter of, of jazz, right? Of one thing leads to a, okay. another. I want to maybe the last, uh, uh, last question uh, for today. Uh, we mentioned it several times, but I want to hone on that issue because we talked about big data. We talked about uh, uh, being uh, exposed to fire hose of data. But then there is the other point, right? You're a startup, you're in a situation that no one has been before. You're walking on a, on, on, on a virgin ground and now you're asking yourself, I don't have data to compare to. How do we get confident decision using QI in these type of situations where it seems like actually we don't have data as opposed to do have data? So I, I would find it hard to, it's an excellent question. I would find it hard to pick an industry or a startup that is so foreign that there's nothing to compare it to, right? There was a, a preceding industry you fit in some sort of industry pocket of some sort. There's some data that you can look at to say, even if this particular category of solution didn't exist, we were serving constituents or we are trying to serve constituents that were served a different way before. Guess what? That's a starting point for, for the data. And then from there, look out and say, what problem are we solving? How has that mm -hmm. been solved other ways? Oh, we're solving it in some completely new way. That's fantastic, but again, you expose another set of data of how things have been solved. How has this been tackled before and failed? Guess what? That is another set of data that you can look at and say, well, here are negative outcomes which I can learn from. So the notion that there's no data out there, I suppose there are some examples, but I think they're very few.
Yeah, I, I, I love that you uh, referenced the, the, the problem because, you know, you're building a business or coming up with an innovation, you know, to, to address either some customer need um, or, or some problem. So that is your starting point. Um, you know, so taking that and really, you know, understanding that problem or understanding that need in a way that, you know, you know, no one else may have or, or analyzing it and then saying, okay, and here's our really unique, creative, innovative solution. But there is some starting point because, you know, what is driving you? What's the catalyst for what you're doing? Um, you know, there's some starting point. Understanding that is, could be your first data point. And to me, one of the exciting things about quantitative intuition, one of the reasons why I find th this combination of quantitative and intuition so useful is exactly that, that, that um, data is not a crystal ball. You will never get to a point where you're 100% confident in the decision. And that's where intuition needs to feed in into that. And, and feeling confident with that decision, because you bring with you your business acumen, because you bring with you everything that you've been learning up to that point and combine that with the very rich or very thin data that, that, that we have for that problem at hand. And um, this is what helped us build this confidence in, in decisions that we are making. And again, realizing that even then, when you make the decision, uncertainty would, would still be left, but we are always better equipped if we are using the data in our advantage to illuminate some of the road, yeah. even if it doesn't illuminate all of the road. Right.